Big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So, Reference Wednesdays, you guys, do you remember those? <laughs> I decided to bring the series back, but with some caution this time. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Yana and I go by the artist handle of Cosmic Spectrum. I bounce back and forth between illustration, character design, and comics for my professional work. And Reference Wednesdays is a video series in which I share my studies with you and talk about relevant topics including some improvement tips and strategies and just other things that may be on my mind that week. So I decided to bring back this video series after some forlorn scrolling through my previous uploads and trying to assess the current situation and state of my art channel and decide on a path forward for my future videos. In this video specifically, I'm just going to talk about some of my work and a little bit of news about character design uh, on my personal professional front uh, and i'm just gonna give you guys a useful habit or i'm gonna talk about a useful habit that i have that i think greatly aids my work as a character designer as well as how i'm planning to handle this video series going forward so let's just get right into it and have ourselves a nice and relaxing drawing session together so first i'm gonna talk about this super useful character design habit which is using a warm-up session to practice designing variations of a character. This is an aspect of figure sketching or warm-ups that can be super easily forgotten at least for me because there's a straightforward utilitarian purpose to doing warm-ups just to get going on the work session literally just warming up my hand and getting in the mood for doing some serious drawings shortly after sometimes it can be easy to overlook potential uh, useful applications of this time being spent on drawing it's easy enough to just draw what i see and meander my way through it but this can often be a missed opportunity, like I said, to practice a super important skill, which is variations of the same character. I'll tell you a little more about how I approach this habit. So it's helpful to just use a reference pack that consists of photos of the same person. I think that's a pretty important aspect of this particular topic for um, doing a warm-up session this may seem counterintuitive because i'm talking about variety but it's actually what makes this task more fun and allows for some creative um, input instead of just copying what you see one-to-one -one, uh, from a photo which is never a good idea for figure studies in my personal opinion I specifically love photo packs from Graffiti Studio. They are next to none when it comes to producing these incredible reference packs for artists. I highly recommend you check them out if you haven't already. And you can just use my discount code for a huge discount of 25% off any and all packs that you buy from them. You can find my code in the description. And anyway, I think referencing multiple photos of the same person in your study session is actually incredibly helpful to get the imagination going. Each pose carries a different mood and this can be used as a quick start point to your drawing. So usually when tasked with designing a character, I'm given some specific information about who the character is and what their circumstances are, the gist of their story, and some physical description details as well, although sometimes those can be pretty sparse actually. Uh, this is typically the information that I use in order to come up with a design and pose a character effectively to communicate their story. However, when doing the task like this, uh, a task like this, sorry, <laughs> designing quick variations based on photos, I actually work backwards uh, from the pose instead of working with a description. So with every new photo and pose that I pull up from the reference pack, I try to just quickly get a gist or a feel of what kind of story this particular pose might convey or might communicate and I try to imagine what kind of character might take this pose and will often add an extra layer of an attitude to 
to it that isn't necessarily like visible or immediately present in the actual photo. So pushing poses that way and pushing facial expressions, exaggerating them a little bit, or just changing them all together in order to strengthen the story aspect of the pose is a really good practice for a character designer. This basically builds my visual library so that I can pull up ideas much faster in the future. All right, before I continue, I want to tell you guys about this really helpful little class I just found on Skillshare. First, if you've never heard of Skillshare before, it's an online community for people who love to learn new skills and explore their creative interests. I usually check out the illustration, fine art, and productivity sections, but there is a huge range of creative topics to explore, now including music and cooking. So this one class I stumbled upon is called Designing the Life You Want, 4 Exercises for Clarity and Motivation by Michelle B. I did something really similar to this several years back and it was one of the most important and first crucial steps for me to get my life and goals together. I think it's very important to do things like this at least every couple of years in order to gauge where you are in terms of your goals and create a clear vision for your life. I'd highly recommend this short little class if you're feeling a bit stagnant or unsure how to make long-term goals. Skillshare is full of useful nuggets and if you'd like to sign up, check out the link below. The first thousand people to use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium. And now, back to the video. So next, I'll talk about what I actually mean by variations. As you can probably see, these variations on a character um, of the little girl aren't actually anything crazy. They're not super different from each other. You might not even see much of a difference yourself, but to me personally, it's more than enough to qualify as a very useful practice and a useful warm-up session. I didn't think too hard about any of these drawings because at the end of the day this was still a warm-up task and not an actual character design task uh, which are not to be confused because um, it's important to keep in mind especially for me uh, because taking the character design aspect of this session too seriously would just tip over the whole drawing session into the wrong direction and deplete my creative energy that should be reserved for my actual job so in during a session like this i'm not thinking super hard about the outfit like i'm not trying to design any sort of outfits or go into a lot of details with the hair or like basically i don't do a whole lot of elaborating it's a very very simple task because at the end of the day i'm still working my way towards an actual work session and this needs to be kept very simple for my purposes and this is actually what makes the task so useful because it kind of kills a bunch of birds in one go well with one stone so yeah <laughs> the first drawing i did um in the session was pretty straightforward i just simply tried to capture a bit of likeness to the actual girl in the photo but afterwards with each pose i brought some small variations to her facial features uh, her face shape and just a little bit of a different hairstyle here and there and um, I actually didn't even do this for every single pose and some of the poses I was more interested in capturing like the pose itself and just the the energy and the cuteness of the childlike attitude I guess in the poses and so not every single pose in the session was utilized for a character design purpose um, but I'm not gonna get into that just in you know the interest of staying on topic here so some quick descriptions that i can give you guys that went through my head um with these poses were something like this so i'd be thinking how about a nerdy bookish little girl with big glasses that i can that is confidently headed to her destination wherever that might be or for something a bit different a more shy and reserved little girl who is uncomfortable about a new school setting or doesn't want to be under pressure for making new friends so she can appear a little bit unfriendly in her attitude or maybe a little girl that's super focused on her big book so you get the idea it's nothing too crazy nothing elaborate just these simple little prompts that uh make it a lot easier for me to make quick decisions when it comes to a facial expression or in which direction to just push the pose. 
Some of the little things I bring personal focus to, like I mentioned before, are just a small variation feature, uh, in the facial features. I have a very established style personally, and the way that I typically draw faces falls into a, an admittedly pretty narrow and generic lane for myself. Like generic, not uh, compared to other people, but just for me personally, there's definitely a type of face that I gravitate towards and tend to draw that's very similar and so unless i put some thought behind the face it can become kind of repetitive and generic so i find it kind of difficult as a result to deviate from that without doing a lot of research and looking at a lot of other people's art styles so this practice of trying to bring just small stylistic variations um, actually helps me quite a lot in the long run. Lastly, I'll just mention this. In this particular session, I stuck to the same basic body type. And in the future, I just I will show you guys uh, how I would tackle bringing some ver variety to the body shapes um, as well. It's just not something that I currently uh, did for this session. And it's definitely not something I'm ignorant of. I just wanted to mention it here because I'm sure it's a thought that will probably pop into a lot of you guys' head just because I stuck to the same basic body type and height. Um, that's just going to be a topic for the future. And so, yeah, uh, like I mentioned, small facial feature variations, and these can be very subtle. I know, like I mentioned, that they might appear to be very similar looking, which they kind of are, but as a character designer, the small details of the facial features, like the shape of the eyes, the slant, the even the amount of lines that I use to convey uh, the eye shape, like these things can be super useful, especially for someone like me, who has such an established style that I tend to fall into very easily. So for that reason, I just wanted to tell you real quick that this is a very good practice to do, and it's a good utilization of any sort of warm-up session that you might be doing, especially when you're using one pack of photos that like the con um, that contains the same person. So yeah, I'd highly recommend trying to mix this into your warm-ups or figure studies. Um, it certainly makes the session a lot more fun and you can definitely learn a lot, at least I do, and it's just another example of picking a slightly more specific focus to a study session or a warm-up session than just the vague goal of studying <laughs> and that's it, which can easily happen if you don't think about it at all. So on that note, I'm just going to move on from this topic and tell you some exciting news which I recently heard. Um, if any of you guys are following me on Instagram, you may have seen me make one story uh, retweeting a trailer for a animated series slash movie. I think it's going to be a movie and followed by an animated series that's been announced on Netflix, which is called Unicorn Academy. And I did the character designs for all the main characters in that show. And oh, it's so exciting. I think it's actually the first time that my character designs are showing up in a production of an actual animated show um as far as i can remember yeah i think that's it because most of the time beforehand it was more like illustration related or for comics um stuff like that but i have done some stuff for animated shows and this is the first one to actually see the light of day and i'm extremely excited about it um i will somewhere in the description include the link to that as well if you're interested in checking that out um it was a pretty lengthy commitment for me um it was a lot of back and forth it was so much fun difficult at times but god what a fun project it was overall in the end and it's been a while since i was off of it so it's really cool to finally see something uh, actually come out uh, with movement the last thing i saw was a couple of months ago they just released like a teaser poster which was actually very exciting but this trailer was something else it's amazing to see the characters in motion and just to see how the 3d renders turned out um i'll probably make another video later just talking a little bit more about my experience working um, on that project uh, just some of the challenges that i faced with doing this type of work and just 
how much fun I guess overall it was to design all these characters and my focus was mostly on the costumes because it's not the type of show it's not like a Pixar type of production where um, there's a lot of different looking characters and it's like a crazy um, creative idea where you know you know what I'm talking about with the Pixar movies where it's like some sort of super new concept and the characters are very abstract and they're very shape based this was nothing like that obviously as you can see uh, the characters are relatively similar looking which was totally fine for its purposes and I guess most of the focus was on costumes and yeah it was a ton of fun I did like hundreds of variations on everything and it's super cool to see the final product and yeah again you guys should check it out i'll leave the link for the trailer in my description and yeah just to quickly get back and circle to the topic to the main topic of this video which is bringing back this series that i used to do as some of you may remember um i think i stopped doing it like about a year ago and I just found myself like I really missed doing the series. I had a lot of fun doing it, but I still do remember the challenges that came with keeping up with my schedule at that time. So last time I was doing the Reference Wednesday series, I definitely overshot when it came to the one video per week commitment because um, I even just rewatched one of my last videos in the series last time and i was just talking about how difficult it was to keep up with such a schedule and it required so much planning that it kind of ended up taking over most of the other work that i was doing and this time i definitely want to be a lot more careful with how much i commit to and so i'm thinking i'm doing one or two videos per month at most for the reference wednesday series and that sounds a lot more sustainable to me and one of my top priorities is working my way back to doing more traditional illustrations that i had some long streaks of doing um not even that long ago now i just found myself in this kind of like a chaotic situation where i was getting ready to move and then i was just participating in some other projects there was just a lot going on and i now want to bring more focus to my art and just get back to more of my traditional illustrations which i really really miss at this point and i will talk more about my comic gloaming veil soon not in this video it's just gonna get super long but yeah this is a good note to leave you guys on and thank you so much for watching this video i hope you will enjoy these reference wednesday's videos as they slowly bring them back hopefully in a timely manner but not too often as i mentioned and don't forget to check out the studio graffiti reference packs that i mentioned they have been really incredible and this is actually one of the big reasons why i want to bring back the reference reference wednesday series is because there are several packs that have been packs that have been released over the last year or so that I'm just dying to utilize. Like they're amazing references and the themes are just so cool. It's something I'm definitely really looking forward to. So yeah, super excited about bringing back this video series. And if you guys have topics for the future, any suggestions at all, I would absolutely love to hear any of them because I'm always on the lookout for something new to talk about when it comes to these um, this particular series and just in general like if you have any questions or some sort of topic that you'd like me to talk about when it comes to art or anything else for that matter i would love to hear it and so please leave a comment in my description and i would love to hear your suggestion so thank you again for watching this video and i will see you in my next one bye <laughs>